This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is all on atmospheric science. It's looking at surface winds, pressure, convective cells in the troposphere, and how we got the names for both the horse latitudes and the doldrums. So as a starting point, you in the classroom have this diagram given to you and we started working on the Hadley, Ferrell and Polar cells as these three convective cycles or cells in the troposphere from the surface to the tropopause, which is roughly between 12 to 15 kilometers in the air and the average temperature is minus 60 at that altitude. So we're looking at the movement of air and heat from the equator towards the north and south poles through this first layer of the atmosphere, the troposphere. And these three cells are the mechanisms that are going to transport heat through wind and air moving across large areas of surface, both ocean and land. So as shown on the diagram, these are the three cells looking at the red cell, which is the Hadley cell between zero degrees the equator and 30 degrees north and south. So it's a mirror image, it's symmetrical either side of the equator, Hadley cell of rising air over the equator, moving laterally north and south towards 30 degrees north and south, and then descending through cold air and sink back down to the surface and recycle back to the equator. Then you've got the feral cell in green, which is a parallel next to the Hadley cell system or, or function or cell movement. And the feral cell is rising at 60, coming back to 30, sinking at 30, and there's a surface wave again along the surface between 30 and 60 degrees north and south of the equator. Then we have the polar cell, which kind of finishes up the three cells. Polar cell around the polar regions, north and south. At 60 degrees south, it's going to rise, like with the feral, and then circulate back down, sink over the, the south and north pole which is 90 degrees south and north, and then recirculate across the surface back to 60 south to then again rise again. So the three identical cells that are three in the northern hemisphere, three in the southern hemisphere, and these are symmetrical. So now you add in the pressure belts. These are consistent areas of low or high pressure around the Earth caused and created by these convective cells. So this is surface pressure. For example, the equator or equatorial region, which is around the equator, between 23 degrees north, 23 and a half degrees south, you're going to have this low pressure, this consistent low pressure with air rising due to convective forces and it being constantly hot and concentrated energy around the equator. Hot air rises. So this low pressure is going to be consistent around the equator. Then we have the two belts of high pressure either side at 30 degrees north, where you have the descending or sinking air at 30 degrees north between the Ferrell and the Hadley cell, and you have this persistent high pressure of air sinking around 30 degrees north and south. Then we have the low pressure at 60 degrees north, which is, again, showing how air is rising between the feral and the polar cell right here. And the same down here in the southern hemisphere where the air is rising at 60 south. And you have these belts or consistent zones of low pressure in this part of the world. Then we have the two polar regions, which is high pressure. So the southern pole, the south pole, Antarctica, is high pressure. Air is sinking down. This part of the polar cell, and likewise in the Arctic, the North Pole, 90 degrees north, you have high pressure because the air is descending right here. So these pressure belts, which are consistent across the parallels, which are these lines here called parallels, and they are always there all through the year. And I also add in that the tropopause is the extent of these cells in troposphere which we're looking at. And this is a three-dimensional system. I've drawn it on the side, but really this is happening all around the Earth in a 360-degree version, and you also have the Earth spinning and on a tilt as well. So this is a complex and dynamic function here. I've drawn it in this 2D version to show you exactly what's going on. So if you focus on the equatorial region to begin with, the around the zero degrees, the equator, this low pressure I stated, we have the winds. These Red, this red line here, this red arrow here and here, this is showing us the surface winds. And I've extended them across the picture, across the diagram, and they are diagonal 
in this direction. Now, this is for a reason, which is both the Earth spins and we have what's called the Coriolis effect, which is making these winds deflected and move a certain direction. But the low pressure is our vacuum cleaner. It's sucking in the air and sucking up the air to rise. So the air is being sucked in towards the low pressure belt. And it looks like this. Now, these winds are called something. We'll get to that in a second. Now, the low pressure where the wind is sucked into is called the doldrums and it's also called the ITCZ which stands for the intertropical convergence zone which is basically saying that in this area this zone that's tropical you know between the uh, tropics of Cancer and Capricorn you have a convergence or coming together of air which we see here with these two arrows that are converging colliding and going towards each other towards this central equatorial line right here now I've added in more winds to fill in the gaps both in the mid latitudes between 30 and 60 degrees north and south and also the polar regions. So we have this high pressure at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. Now this high pressure is our leaf blower which is going to move the air or blow the air away from this location as it comes down from the tropopores as seen here and this causes the winds to move away obviously we discussed how the winds move away towards the equator and recycle back within the Hadley cell and causing the ITCZ but also they move away from 30 towards 60 degrees south and 60 north towards that low pressure system and these are angled in a certain direction as well these green arrows so they're angled in a certain direction. Then we have the 60 degree north and south low pressure again where air is rising. The mix of the feral cell and the polar cell as they, as they collide and converge. You have the converging airs of the polar and the feral cells, the mid-latitudes. And you see this by the blue and the green arrows pointing towards each other and going towards each other. Again, the blue polar winds are angled at a certain directions so make sure you have those in as well so you should be following along with this video and adding in your arrows and your labels to your own diagrams so the diagrams you have look like mine on this screen so around the equatorial region we call this the doldrums now the doldrums is an old english word that originates from an area being very dull very uninteresting very boring and also is linked to the word tantrum so why would you call this area dull and boring? You know, when the 16th, 17th, and 18th century uh, explorers and sailors would travel across mostly the Atlantic between the old world being Europe and Africa to the new world being the Caribbean and newly discovered North America since 1492 and Columbus, you had the movement of people in boats, sailboats, going across the Atlantic uh, from from east to west and west to east and when they traveled across the Atlantic they found that when they when they went across the equator motor translation is a boat and a sailboat for that and once they pass over this equatorial region they found the wind died down and the boats couldn't move so what happened was in this diagram you have the boat over the equator on the ocean and the wind is being drawn up by the low pressure so the actual wind across the ocean surface is basically gone it's been sucked up in this low pressure system at the Hadley cell on either side so a boat that's going through this let's say 300 mile span of ocean over the equator has no wind to move or propel itself across the earth's surface so basically stops and is now just stuck in this area of no wind no way of kind of moving the boat and just at mercy of the slow ocean currents. So these ancient sailors back in the 16th, 17th, 18th century used to hate getting caught in these areas called the doldrums because it's so boring because they wouldn't go anywhere. And these sailors would get bored and I guess fight and have be uh, unrest. And also when they were at sea for so long, and they were caught in these areas of no wind, the doldrums, for so long, their minds started to get a bit crazy, and they were starting to hallucinate and dream and imagine of things that weren't always there. So, of course, these sailors, these men, 
had uh, left their wives and girlfriends at the on land at the ports and hadn't seen them for many months or many weeks. So they started to miss their wives, miss their girlfriends. So what happened was they started looking out the sea as, you know, what else are you going to do? But look out at the sea and watch the ocean. And they started seeing these animals, these ocean animals around the boat. And they started seeing these sea lions and these larger animals. And because they're a little bit crazy at being at sea for so long, that they started to imagine these sea animals as beautiful creatures, beautiful women. So this is where the idea and notion and myth of mermaids came from, was the misconception and the craziness of these sailors thinking that these animals were these beautiful women. And yeah, mermaids, that's where it came from. Now focus on the areas of high pressure around 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, looking at what's called the horse latitudes. So this area is called this because of a certain reason. Now, ever since humans crossed the Atlantic to either seek out new lands or seek out new trade routes, try and trade goods from each area, furs and, and tobacco and timber and silk and spices, you also had the moon of horses. Now, the American colonies and the growth of America had a lot of farmland and land that had to be worked by horses. Now, horses were indigenous to America previously, but there was a large import of horses from Spain, the Middle East, where they brought over thousands, thousands of horses to aid the development of 13 colonies and also these areas to farm in America when America became a lot larger and a lot stronger in the 1800s. So they would transport these horses by ship. Now, again, just like the equator and the doldrums, the 30 degrees north and south is an area of high pressure. So the air is going to sink down and then be moved north and south of that sinking pressure. But the actual location and latitude of 30 degrees north and south, you experience limited or no wind. So when ships would sail from America or from Europe, towards this area of the ocean over 30 degrees north and south, you'd experience a slowing down effect. And unfortunately, boats get caught in this for a long time. It's the same as the doldrums. Now, these ships only have a certain amount of rations, both food, water, and perhaps alcohol for these sailors. And if the boat was stuck in these horse latitudes where there's no wind, then all the rations and supplies would be used. And what's left? Well, Rather than go to starvation, the horses were used as food, which is horrible because it's a beautiful animal and, and uh, they're amazing, but it's either starvation and death or eat the horse. Or the other version was a lot of these boats would push the horses off into the ocean to make the boats lighter, so more chance of being moved by the ocean currents and to get out of these areas of no wind, which is because of the high pressure and the sinking air as seen by the diagram. So the horses were kind of like the last thing to be eaten or last thing to be gone because they were a high value good that they were transporting from Europe, let's say, to America. So again, these areas were called the horse latitudes. So we discussed the three cells, discussed the pressure belts that are created because of these three cells. We discussed the winds, the surface winds that you see on the diagram. We discussed the doldrums and the ITCZ and what it is. We discussed the horse latitudes. Now, we've got to discuss the winds. Now, the winds are called certain names based on where they originate from, where they come from. So, if you're looking at a compass and you have north, south, east, and west, you can see which way these winds are coming from. So, that's how they are named. For example, the winds either side of the equator that converge to form the ITCZ, they are the trade winds. Now, these are easterlies. They come from the east and go to the west, both on the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So these are called the trade winds, but they are easterlies. Now, the winds that go from 30 north to 60 north and the same in the southern hemisphere for the feral cell, these are called the westerlies because they start in the west and move to the east. They are westerlies. They are named from where they start from. So they are called the westerlies. Now, the winds in the northern and southern poles, these are called the polar easterlies from 60 south and 60 north up to 90 north and 90 south. So this area up here around the polar regions, the Arctic and Antarctic, these are called the polar 
easterlies. They start in the east and go west. And these form the global wind system as part of the general circulation model with the Hadley, Ferrell, and Polar cells. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.